This is Let's Talk Business with your hosts, Mark Ebinger and Howie Nestel. Now, here's Mark. Welcome to Let's Talk Business, the show that talks entrepreneurship with some of the best businesses in the San Antonio area. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk with Tyler Moore, a real estate agent at the Sage Oak Realty Group. Tyler, first timer, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're also going to talk with Rom Carrion, if I pronounce that right, Carrion, mm -hmm. who hosts the Born to Hustle podcast and organizes the Small Business Networking Group. Rom, welcome to the show. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it a lot. You got a much cooler sounding voice than I do, so I don't really want you on the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the accent, honestly. It comes with the accent. Whatever, stop talking. Anyway, <laughs> in studio with us today is Howie Nestel, the owner of Sharkmatic Advertising, where he and his team have helped over 1,500 clients grow their marketing influence. Howie, great to see you again. Thank you, Mark. Always good to sit, say, next to you, right next to your picture. Look, I'm sandwiched in between two marks. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Howie also, he's there working on our website. Super excited for you guys to be doing that. It's like having a real website company do your website so that it's optimized correctly. I've never had that. I've always Super kind of cool. done it myself, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. So. And you're going to get the best website we've ever built. Because I always say that the best website is the next website. So oh, after yeah. 1,100 websites, you think we take all that experience and the 1,100th and first website is the best. You know what? When you get it done, I want a T-shirt that says 1101. Yeah. All right. Only well, if we finish somebody else's site before <laughs> yours, it might be 1107. 1102 or 1107. All right, whatever. All right. I'm your host, Mark Ebinger, the owner of Krukus Marketing Agency, a company that specializes in giving small businesses a competitive edge by hiring low-cost virtual administrative specialists from outside the United States, which I have 24 full-time employees all sourced out of the Philippines, and I would not be able to do that if I did not know how to do this uh, sourcing stuff. Uh, so it's a really, really good way for small businesses to actually get that competitive edge that larger companies are doing already, but now we can do it as well. Quick reminder for our listeners, you can catch video and podcast versions of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. And if you're a business owner in the San Antonio area and would like to have your company featured on the show, visit our website at satalkradio.com, or you can call our office at 210-879-8804. That's 210-879-8804, and we'll get you booked on the show. So, Rom, you're starting a podcast. I've got a podcast. Um, Howie's on a podcast, and now Tyler's on a podcast. Yeah. So I guess the question is, should podcasting be part of your business marketing strategy? Howie, what are your initial thoughts? Well, one thing that you left off is that Howie was a guest on Rom's I didn't Born know that. The Hustle podcast. No, you're cheating on me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I was a guest there. I'm a co-host here. Um, it seems that way. It seems like that's the next thing. Everybody either is on a podcast or has a podcast. And I say if it brings value and if you can attract listeners, then you should totally have a podcast. But I would encourage people to be a guest on podcasts first before they decide whether or not they want to be on a podcast because it always seems easier than it really is. Mm -hmm. Everything else, like, yeah. oh, yeah, what's a big deal? Just get a camera, get a microphone, get a guest, and that's it. But, you know, it gets very complicated. We have five cameras here. We have a smart screen. We have four microphones. We have a bunch of headphones we're not using. We have to book guests. <laughs> you know, we're... Yeah. So there's a lot of moving parts. Then there's all the editing that's getting everybody's name right, then the lower thirds. Then there's the distribution. Mm -hmm. And no offense to other podcast uh, hosts out there, but you know, good luck in getting up to 14,000 subscribers on YouTube like Let's Talk Business podcast has, but that's really been a hustle, to borrow the name of your podcast, to get there. And it's a nonstop game. It's always marketing. Mm -hmm. putting money behind it, putting staff behind it. Mark has 24 full-time employees, uh, not all of them working directly on the podcast, but all somehow involved because they have clients that they're representing. We're getting them booked, those kinds of things. So I would say, yes, it's a good idea, but make sure you do it right. If not, it's something else that's going to detract you from working in and on your business. That's a good point. That good point. I, I didn't even think of that. Is that it's one thing to start in and kind of fall off, but if it takes away from your mission, then that could be problematic if you're trying to get somewhere with it. But, Ron, you started a new one, and I know you're doing a pretty good push on it. I know you're working with Matt on it. So tell me, how is that going for you? 
it does far as it being a very fun experience. I'm not going to lie to you. And I've never been a guy. This is actually my first time being a guest on a podcast. Oh. So, um, but the thing is, I'm the type of person that just YOLO it. I don't know if you know that term, <laughs> meaning just do it. Is that a, so, is that a Marine term? What is it? No, it's a, it's a, it's <laughs> my, it's, it's a, it's a made up <laughs> word. <laughs> no, it's, it's kind of like oh, my generation kind of thing. It's, 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 it's culture. I, you you I need to get some. But like, like not, <laughs> nonetheless, yeah. uh, YOLO means you only live once. So uh, that means that you just and and I remember somebody told me that just that like action is more powerful than just saying about it or talking about it. I've been talking about doing this podcast for four months before I finally decided to dedicate the whole month of September to actually do it, and that's pre-recording, learning it, doing the research, editing. It was one learning curve after another learning curve after another learning curve. Being at the broadcaster, understanding so many other moving parts, I respect podcasters, and even YouTube creators far more than I've ever done in my entire life. Because now I understand exactly the amount of effort. And some of the things is not even high effort. It's just time consuming. That's it. It's not hard or it's not difficult. Editing is not difficult. Well, how does it fit into your, I mean, this is a good question. I think that as far as from a business mindset is how does it fit into your uh, mission of where you're going with your business? In my business, uh, when I started doing the networking group on the small business networking group, mm -hmm. I just wanted to have, I understood that creating your own events gives you control of the name flow. And in a business where you are looking for general, you know, leads and talking to people, sometimes having your own events just gives you a better opportunity to decide what kind of people you want to attend. Now, Howie, you've been in a lot of events Right. And, and you've organized, I'm sure, your first. I was at a lot of events this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to Rum's, uh, his reasoning there as far as, you know, put it, hosting events, hosting a podcast, stuff like that. What are your thoughts? His reasoning is right on. You know, it's hard. You know, it's valuable. My question is can you monetize it? So, if you can monetize all these things that are fun, that's your word, not mine, then more power to you. But usually what's fun doesn't monetize. You know, what's mm -hmm. very hard to do monetizes. And so I try to start with those things that either I don't want to do or that are very difficult to do. And usually it's the same thing for my competitors. They don't want to do them either and they're not fun. Mm -hmm. So if I do them and I do them well, guess yeah. what? I can capitalize on them. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, that's, that's why we're in business. Now you might have the long-term game, which is, you know, I'll build it and eventually they'll come and that's fine. You know, look, when you're young, you have time, you have the energy, maybe you don't have the level of expenses that Mark and I have, then go do it. I'm all for Nike slogan, just do it. Mm -hmm. my, my point is, eye on the ball, make money, capitalize on it, bring in business that that'll benefit you and your clients. Yeah, and I'm yeah. excited to follow your journey on what you're doing with your podcast because it's like, because you're starting fresh. I mean, I've been in the game almost two years now, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is this is not profitable, right? As far as like, it's not bringing in, like I'm not going on vacations because I've got a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. But it's great for marketing. It's tremendous value mm -hmm. marketing. But that's just me, right? That's what Mark Ebinger did, right? What Rome's going to do is that's your journey. So that's why I'm excited to follow and see where that goes and learn from what you're doing. Because you're podcasting right out of the same studio, right? That is correct. Yeah, so we can all learn together. Neat. So, Tyler, you've been in real estate for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, podcasting is something that works well on YouTube for realtors. Yeah. Have, do you have any experience there? Do you know anybody who's doing anything there? Yeah, that's a really great question. I don't personally have experience doing it. I um, It's not something I would like associate as my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. This is pushing me outside mm -hmm. of my comfort zone, which is kind of why I love it because it's where growth happens and yeah. things like that. But yeah, this would not be something I would ordinarily fall into. And so, so far I've focused on my strengths and different things like that, but I think it's a really great opportunity to grow into. And I think for our industry, something like this makes a lot of sense. And I really love to, as I've learned more from podcasting and like gotten into it a little bit more, not in the sense of, being on shows, but just listening. I really like how it's just a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I love business talks that are a conversation rather than just structured and everyone's got like a exact bullet point that they have to hit. 
Yeah. I just think it's a really great way yeah. to get information. You mean compared there. to the news? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That we're not reading right. headlines. We're just having a conversation True. about big thinking ideas and things that have worked well for us and things we're experiencing in our own industries. And I think this is a really cool way to share that. Yeah, well, I applaud you for coming on to a podcast because uh, one thing that I know about realtors and real estate agents, I don't know if that's the same term, but... Uh, but is that most of them do the same thing that all the other realtors do. Correct. So there's 12,000 yeah. residential real estate agents in San Antonio. Uh, my joke is that 8,500 of them are out of business. They just don't know it yet. Yeah, well, you're and, right. Uh, and they're doing, <laughs> the bare, they're doing the bare minimum. They're doing what their broker gives them, the business card with a picture, yeah. the template, and then the website with the broker name, forward slash... San Antonio, forward slash, northeast, forward slash, their name. <laughs> Throw a couple of hashtags yeah. in. And, and, yeah, then, yeah. And, then, and then the site is exactly the same as everybody else's, except with yeah. a different name. Yeah. No, I think you make a really great point. And I think that was a, a tough reality for a lot of people getting into real estate aside, but any sales industry is you think when there's a relatively low barrier to entry, you think, okay, I get into it. Where are all my calls? Where are all my clients just rushing in? And when you, you know, when you do just maybe like what you see from an outsider's perspective, right? Because so much of the work, as we all know, goes in behind the scenes, right? They're not seeing you make calls and reach out to right. clients till 8 p.m. and work on weekends and go out and show on a Sunday and things like that. So I think when you actually see all the work that goes into it and you have the consistency and a, and a clear plan, I think that's what a lot of people in my industry lack is is that vision and that plan on what well, are they going to get up and you need do. a tv show like you know selling the oc or whatever yeah on, right yeah I, I i love those kind of shows eh, it's junk food for the mind but whatever uh but it's like you know it's it's fun to see that that behind the scenes stuff to an extent you know, yeah, yeah selling the oc is probably not a good example of that but uh, at any rate, but it lets us get to know you. And yeah. I think that's a big part of being a real estate agent or a podcast host is like, do I vibe with you? Do I want to yeah. come on and, and have you ask me questions or do I want to engage with you to to sell my house? Yeah. People want to work with people they like yeah. and that they can feel comfortable around. And that are competent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say. That's a big yeah. point too. Mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of people that I like that are realtors and I wouldn't use them because I don't think they're competent. <laughs> yeah. Well, Some of them are related that is... to actually. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Well, yeah. And you have a similar story to everyone, right? Every With 12,000 agents in our city alone, everyone has a distant cousin that has the real estate license right. and things like that. Yeah. But and I everybody think... has a tia cuca that's going to sell our house. <laughs> And you just got to... What is that, a tia cuca? Like your... Uh, your I'm not you familiar know, with that Aunt, one. Aunt May, in, Aunt May. For, for, for the Anglos. Okay. Got it. You know? <laughs> Sorry. Tia I'm about as white as you the Aunt May. <laughs> you know, that, and, and you know, you sell her a house and you think like, oh man, I got it made. Yeah. I made yeah. my commission. And now, now they're looking for another aunt and nobody else is buying. You yeah. Know? And you have to go way, way outside of your comfort zone uh, to really make things happen, especially where you have that many competitors. There are not a lot of industries where you have 12,000 competitors yeah. in this market. Yeah. I'm just lucky that, like you mentioned earlier, you know, 80% of the business is done by 20% of the agents. Mm -hmm. So even You're though there's in that a- You're 20%? There's a very- I would like to consider myself, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure the numbers would back that first. as well. Let's yeah. use AI to verify that. Please. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm kidding. We can ask well, somebody, no, you, but... look, the idea is that's what that's what you hustle towards. That's what yeah. you want to. That's exactly. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's jump into the first segment. That was okay. a good discussion. Uh, everybody's warmed up now. I think. Um, but uh, so first up on the show is Tyler Moore, a real estate agent at the Sage Oak Realty Group. Um, I, I do an introduction like that so we can break it into an actual segment. But cool. so. How did you get into real estate? What's your background? So I um, grew up kind of like the HGTV kid. You know, I would. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I was always watching it and everything like Looks that. Looks easy. I can do that. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Um, and so I always kind of went in through college and everything like that, knowing that this was the path I, in my head, wanted to go. Lucky for me, it didn't really change. Good. And so I got into property management and, and college housing, actually, which was an experience in and of itself. Um, and that kind of led me to my real estate journey, getting into real estate sales, um, joined a team. You're, I was an individual actually initially. And then like many people, I realized, oh, wait, you know, I actually have to have a plan to this and I have to have some structure to be really successful. So then I, I joined a team, learned a ton 
And then recently this year is where we, um, my fiance and I and some business partners created our own team, which has been a really cool experience. How big is that team now? Right now we have five people on our team. Okay. Yeah. All real estate agents doing the real estate stuff, or do you have it <laughs> yeah, divided up? All all licensed agents. We have um, one of our partners is primarily on the admin side. Okay. Um, but everyone on our team has the real estate license. Everyone is free to you know do real estate and, and help clients and everything like that. We just have some structure behind it. More money in building a team as opposed to an individual. Is that why you went that way? Well, I mean, or is I think, it just more fun? Yeah, to do it that way. Yeah, really great question. And I, I think we get that a lot. Um, I don't know if more money is maybe like the the right word to say, just because my word. Or, or, yeah, it's your, <laughs> hey, you, you own that. Um, but no, I think because you can make a you know a really really great living as an individual agent doing it at a high level. I think the differentiation for me was when I realized that. I really, one, I love the success through others part. And two, I didn't want my income solely dependent on if I sold a house that month or not. I wanted a little bit of diversity. Gotcha. So you guys have uh, commission profit sharing. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. We have a, a team structure with splits and different things like that as to where but team obviously profits, you can, agent yeah. wins, yeah. everything. And then, but you, but you still benefit if you're the one that brings in the rain. Yeah, correct. I, I, and I actually operate, um, maybe somewhat unique to some sales organizations. My fiance and I, even as the owners of the team, we are on the exact same splits as everyone else. Um, so we don't have any special treatment for us. We operate as an agent on our own team. Um, so that way there's transparency and consistency and everyone, you know, I always tell people if you're not willing to, you know, if you're preaching these splits and different things like that, if you're not willing to live by it yourself, how, how great is the system that you've really created? We can't welcome. say that I'm the boss. So yeah, we have to do well, well, welcome to America, <laughs> man. Capitalism. You know, that one no, no, look. Hey, I've had uh, clients that have full open books and all that yeah. stuff. The downside to that is that when you have team members that don't understand the structure of, of building a big business, then you look at it and you're like, oh my God, we're bringing in a million dollars a quarter? And then most people think that Half of it, at least, is profit, and it's yeah. not. Mm -mm. Yeah, and that's the problem with open books. Yeah, sometimes you know people start to think like, "Well, God, man, my boss are making a bunch of money." So I don't know, but yeah. I get it. When when everybody is a contributing agent, yeah, uh, whether they're admin or out in the field, I get it because they all understand the structure. But if you guys get Correct. employees, and then employees are quote unquote participating in what you guys are doing. I don't know that uh, I yeah. would want to open up my books, you know? Yeah, and that, that communication reason. side's important. Right now, we're still small enough, and, and we have a really great core team that it hasn't become a, you know, a conversation or, you know, an obstacle to overcome just yet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're right. With growth, that's when you start to become yeah. adaptive and, and start figuring yeah. out, okay, And just like a marriage, like relationships, those things have to – Mark likes my Howieisms, and that <laughs> just reminded me of one. For me – after 30 years in business and 20 oh, a partner or owner in 25 different companies with partners, for me, the only ship that's guaranteed not to sell, I mean, sorry, let me start that over, <laughs> not sell. See, I'm, you got me thinking <laughs> yeah, about yeah. sales. Uh, the, the only ship guaranteed not to sail is a partnership. So I'm a sole sailor. I don't want to go with a bunch of people. I don't want any partners. You know, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. the t-shirt. just didn't work out for me. But- if you work on the relationship and part of it, open books and great communication and everybody benefiting, it can, it can certainly work. Yeah. I think it, the key thing you mentioned, right, is interests have to be aligned. Um, you know, if interests aren't aligned and they can't see how the company profiting and benefiting is also benefiting them, like there's a win for everyone in there to be found. I think that's. Well, that's I think a lot of partnerships are born out of necessity. Yeah. Right. It's like I, I, I can't do it on my own. I need that those expertise or that manpower or whatever. It's like so it's born out of necessity. And yeah. then eventually it does tend a lot of times it can tend to fall apart. Uh, yeah, but because again, then they because somebody get does most of the work and then the other then then but that's they push part it of the being, process. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to be afraid of. So that's a great you bring up a fantastic point. I usually I've do. had fifteen hundred <laughs> clients at, at Sharkmatic Advertising. Do you know why the probably one of the top five reasons why some of my clients' businesses fail is because they went into partnership with somebody else that couldn't make the business go on their own. So they couldn't make it. 
the partner couldn't make it. They met. They're like, oh my God, we should start a yeah. business together. The three yeah. Stooges. You know, yeah, let's yeah. put our let <laughs> let's put let's put our resources together and build this thing yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> for for those kinds of things to work, you have to have somebody who loves people and on the field. Somebody who loves working on the weekends because they value their weekdays. And then somebody who loves admin. Yeah. Like I hate admin. So yeah, if yeah. I had a partner. You know, if somebody wants to be my partner, buy out <laughs> half my company for a billion dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could do all the admin. I'm I'm behind on 23,000 unread emails and and 200 unread texts. So, you know how yeah, I, yeah. Uh, look, I'm going to plug my own business. You know why Please. why I or how I dealt with that was I started hiring VAs to handle this because yeah. it's like getting people on the show was something I had to overcome because I hate cold calling even though I was like, "Hey, you want to come on a radio?" I was on KTSA at the time. It's like that's an easy sell, but I still hated it. But the admin stuff or the calls or whatever I hate, you just fill that with somebody that can fill that spot so you don't have to share equity and you can still get to the same place. Yeah, For sure. You, you wouldn't have been able to do and have the success you've had with a podcast in two years and have show notes and guests and run three podcasts or four back to back to back, you know, without, without your admins, for mm -hmm. sure. No, no, it couldn't happen, for sure. All right, so what's the goal? How big are you guys going to get? Yeah, that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, <laughs> Why do you I, ask all the great questions? Yeah, yeah. Well, because I come never, prepared. I, yeah. I, yes. I did my research. And, and um. <laughs> seriously, it matters to me. That that's a question yeah. that yeah. matters because it's like, look, if you're going to start a journey, where are you going? Yeah. I mean, what are you aiming at? That's all I'm asking. What are you yeah. Aiming at? No, absolutely. I see us being absolutely one of the largest real estate teams here in San Antonio. But more than that, I think we're building out a system that this is kind of proof of concept for that you know isn't geographically you know, like it's not just San Antonio that we can do this in. I I think we've figured out a really cool team structure in the way that our real estate business and a real estate team is run. So right now we're in the process of growing organically, bringing on salespeople, so real estate agents. Um, we have, like I said, a phenomenal admin um, that is not at capacity yet. So we have the capacity to bring on some more people and a really great structure and systems in place and things like that. So organic growth in terms of how quick we get there, that is something that yeah. I think for me, I'm just really big on finding the right people. Um, so I've been culture? In, yeah, culture is huge for me. And I think too, just getting and creating organic buy-in within your people. I think it, so my growth path starts with the people first. To be honest, when my fiance and I were planning to do this, it was just going to be us. Um, but just through having conversations and networking and talking with our friends and family. The organic other, thing that you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, the organic thing. We realized that there's an opportunity to be in business with, with people that we see as extremely, extremely skilled. They fit culturally, integrity, all of the things that we want within our organization. And so we grew faster than we even anticipated. It was just going to be us. But we did that because we found the right people. So I think for me, I'm more just hunting for the right people to plug in, and then we'll grow as as those people are identified. Yeah, that's like with my podcast, and as it's grown, I, I look. I'm always open to you know the right co-host coming coming in contact and and building that relationship. And if it, so, I get it. It's yeah. people first, and yeah. don't be in a rush to make the wrong decision. You know what I'm saying? Well, exactly. That like how he's. <laughs> It can't yeah. be a Marxism because it just that yeah, word Marxism, doesn't work right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have quite Don't be the in a flaw. rush to make the wrong decision. How many like dating Don't relationships be in a would rush. be better? Right? I'll put that as one of my quotes for next week. Tyler, we're out of time for your segment, yeah. but if people want to get in touch Thank with you, you, how do they do that? So they can go to sayjokerealty.com. Hopefully I said that slow enough. Sayjokerealty.com, or they can give me a call. I'm open book and as realtors, our phone number's everywhere. So 830-370-5551. All right, just like a true professional, you got everything out. He even knew his phone number. I had I guests it. on sometimes. The they're like, oh, yeah. ah, God, I don't know what my phone number is. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I didn't right. know there was going to be a test, Mark. All right, yeah, cool. right. All right, thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it, man. It's <laughs> good getting to know you. All right. Can you attach it? There you go. Thanks. Mm. I like to see the, my picture of myself up on the screen there. <laughs> <laughs> it's making it bigger out. I got the feeling he's going to zoom in. Right. So <laughs> for those of you who can't uh, – if you're just listening to the podcast, we're actually playing with the big screen here. All go. right. Next up on the show is Ryan uh, Carrion, who helps or who hosts the Born to Hustle podcast and organizes the Small Business Networking Group. Ryan, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Hoorah. You did come dressed. Um, for the I'm dressed. 
24/7. He's dressed all the time. All the time. Oh, yeah. Well, you're contrasting nicely with the white background. Oh, okay. On, That's on beautiful. The yeah. There, so that. Yeah. Just when you sit in the host chair, don't wear that because you'll disappear. <laughs> so when you're in here doing your podcast, what's your host chair? Is it over here? Yeah, it's yeah. actually the this same is, chair. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I started that here. Yeah. So really? I'm the one that yeah, designated yeah. this as the host chair. Matter of fact, makes sense. Yeah. Oh, legit. I mean, honestly, I'm a little <laughs> bit jealous of you in my throne. I'm just like, how can I politely tell this guy to? Get Why don't you say something? I would switch. You would? Yeah. I would no, switch you would. <laughs> I, I, he, he offered the same thing to me. I go, okay, let's switch. He goes, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> next. I appreciate Thank the full warning, Howie. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, tell me a little bit about your background. So my background is a little bit diverse, but to get to the point is, I did a contracting business once upon a time. And um, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. And by fun, I know what you're trying to say, Howie, but by fun, let me, let me uh, He's all under extend it a little bit. No, I wasn't no fun. He's in fruitful. a foxhole over there, right? Yeah. No, like, fun uh, and fruitful. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get speechful for a minute. Let me just uh, fix my tie. But like, no, realistically speaking, I do like a challenge. I like the, I'm a, I'm a big believer of go big or go home. So when something looks difficult, I always say overcome the mountains. And that's the fun part. And I don't know if that's like some, I actually learned that from a gunnery sergeant when I was in the Marines. And they asked, like, hey guys, I know that, you know, it really sucked. And I'm not going to get into details, but it really, really did suck. And it's like, but that's the fun part. Like when you go this weekend and you get to see your family, you can say, hey, Sergeant Ortiz literally planted his boot in my face. Like imagine the stories. And I was like, I like that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what? I I'm, I'm think I'm going to keep it. And for some twisted reason, I actually did. Yeah. So when it comes to fun, I do like the learning curves, the difficulties and stuff like that. And even on the podcast and the group and the contracting business, um, the contracting business was primarily in San Antonio. We overcome some challenges and we decided to buy some, like literally organically speaking, we end up in, in South Texas, in Brownsville specifically. And we had a client who I am actually contracted not to say who it is. But it's a really cool client. All right. We're talking Building NSA entry. here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, but that client alone, because I remember whenever you start something difficult, like monetizing or something that is quote unquote fun, my, your number one, my number one priority is how can I create cash flow? Like not making sales or cash flow. So when I had the contracting business, it really built me who I am and how I do things. And Basically, if I can get to the point, is basically why I started what I'm doing up to this point. Well, I'm going to learn from you on yeah. monetizing the podcast. And I love you military guys because I'm telling you, you guys can run circles around us civilians mm -hmm. because of your work ethic and your perseverance and your like kind of high level of of honor and respect and how you treat clients and all that stuff. So uh, kudos to, to you guys, really. Um, well, when you get to a point where a boot on your face is fun, yeah, then that's a different mindset. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I it's... picked up on that too. I was like, yeah, I, I tell tell my kids that I'm like, Roam said it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why are you guys complaining? Yeah, <clears throat> what? Get off the phone with CPS. They're yeah. not going to get out of here. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, realistically speaking, like it's like it's like, oh, that really like. Let's see if you guys agree. You guys went through your challenges, correct? Like still going through them, brother. They oh yeah, yeah. But like it's an ongoing. We, yeah, some <laughs> challenges were a little bit more than much, and realistically speaking, it's not just a memory. And that's another thing that I picked up as well. Like if you go through something really challenging, or someone that you really do not want to speak to for whatever reason, like it's just gonna be a memory. Like just embrace the suck and just do it. Yeah. Like. Um, See, I that's why military people are very successful. Right. Embrace yeah. the it's stuff that's and a really just deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, so I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to hijack your, your talk here just shortly, but there was a, I was listening to a guy, I think it's Jocko. Mm -hmm. You guys know him, right? Mm -hmm. He's the ex-Navy SEAL guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's like one of the toughest guys on the planet, right? He was talking about how when you go through BUDS, the, the, mm -hmm. the SEAL training, you're going from the time you get up to breakfast. Mm -hmm. Just survive to that point. Embrace the suck to get to there. And then the next one, and then the next one. And then you've got your bed that's perfectly made waiting for mm -hmm. you at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? And rinse and repeat. So I went through Air Force Basic, which is a heck of a lot easier than Marine, right? Yeah. But I was I was green as green could be, and but that's what I did. It was automatic in me. This is how I dealt with it. So anyway, I just want to comment on that point because I think that's – uh, it's a huge mindset yeah. thing that can help you in entrepreneurship. Yeah, here's the thing. The suck doesn't last forever, and the rewards don't last forever. So don't fall mm -hmm. in love with either one of them. 
That's I'm gonna a, actually that's like that quote. Right? I love that quote. Yeah, because hey, I do fall in love for with that, though, right? that's, I'm gonna monetize yeah, y'all it. Y'all didn't put any pins. No notes allowed over well, here. Well, we'll make a clip out of it. So <laughs> my video go. editor, she looks for the Howieisms. That's definitely a Howieism yeah, right there. I love it. So now tell us a little bit about the. I know you're here to talk about the less uh, born to hustle podcast, but mm. uh, tell me a little bit about like. What's the plan there? How do you plan on monetizing it? Who do you invite? Are the people you're inviting strategic to maybe plug into other types of business mm -hmm. endeavors you have going? Yes. What's, what's the... So, Born to Also podcast or um, it's all about business owners. Um, you have to be, if you are a 1099 for at least a year, and business owners as well. Like, I really, I realistically, anybody who's been doing it for around a year, uh, you already, like, qualified for, to be in the podcast because... Obviously, if you've been for seven weeks, there's not a lot to talk about because it's all about what ignited the, the hustle, like what made you want to do it, what kept you on it, because we know the difficulties. And if you can give yourself advice now that you have learned from it, what would it be? As long as I tackle those three things, that's a Born to Hustle episode. And the strategic behind it is, number one, I don't know if you guys heard of Value for Value podcasting. Have you guys heard of that? I have not heard of that. So there's some platforms where... As the listener is listening to your podcast, they're also mining for BTC or other type of cryptocurrencies. That's for value for value podcasting. And sometimes that BTC, you can go both ways depending. Some of them you actually had to get the boostograms, which is like a donation of BTC. Or as you are listening and I am basically producing it, then we're both monetizing in regards to a BTC standpoint. And BTC is a, it's a hit and miss, especially since nowadays it's still like a little bit iffy. But the fact that it's mm -hmm. there and I know it will be the future is too excites me that the fact that I'm monetizing on that aspect. Another one is that when it comes to the business owners, uh, one of the things that I want to build, everybody talks about their business brand. Crucos Marketing, Advertise, uh, Shark, Sharkmatic advertising. I don't even, I'm not even going to try. My, my R's Sage. are not going to let me. <laughs> so... All of that combined, we focus too much on the business brand, but we don't focus on our personal brand. And I know you do, Howie, because I've done my research on you. But, like, not everybody does. And I remember this quote, and this is actually kind of like the reason what motivated me on starting the podcast and also why the way it's structured is the first trillionaire is going to be a personal brand. And that was by Ty Lopez. I don't know if you guys heard of him mm, before. Yeah, I've heard of yeah. him. So, I don't like him, by the way. Uh, I have mixed feelings, but you don't have to like him in order to 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 say whether that's. <laughs> but I listen to his yeah. stuff. Yeah, extract yeah. value. He like when he said that, and and there's multiple times, even Grant Cardone and he, he, other individuals out there, like all of them have their personal brand, and it's 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 it makes so much sense to me because when I started my sales journey, both in general and in contracting business, it's always about let people buy into you first before they buy into the business. And being a personal brand is basically what that is about, to get to know you. Well, and people can't take it away from you. So, like, if you're working New York Life, for example, right, or you're Keller Williams or whatever, yeah. and you're all about whatever that thing is, and then then it's taken away from you. You're fired or you move on or whatever, and you've lost that. Whereas if you're developing your personal brand, you own it. Well, it goes with point. you wherever you go. Exactly. Yeah. It's your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thousand we're, percent. That was my alarm. We got to wrap up, but uh, that was a fast ten minutes, right? Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. so if folks want to get in touch with you, Rom, how do they do that? Um, well, I'm still creating the website because I'm I'm most likely going to look for a professional because I'm yeah. it's been quite a headache. Do it, I tell you what? Just do it right the first time, man. Honestly, yeah. So it's RohamCarryon.com. It's, it's it's related to the personal brand kind of deal. RohamCarryon.com. You're going to see so many resources in relation to me. Or you can reach me out by phone number. I prefer if you text me first because I get so many different phone calls. I don't trust the issues are increasing every now and then. Mm -hmm. So it's 210-765-8055. Social media-wise, LinkedIn preferably because I'm very active on it, extremely active on it. You probably know yep. about it because you know your research. Yeah, Why don't you spell, spell your name? Um, R-O-H-A-M-C-A-R-R-I-O-N. It's a really cool name. Anybody blessed with that name is probably handsome, yeah. just saying. Um, wow. Well-dressed. I, I felt yeah, guilty yeah. about plugging my own stuff earlier with that. <laughs> over hey, that. he's building his brand. Uh, he is building true. his brand. He's not shy about it either. All right, as we wrap up the show, quick reminder, check out our latest podcast and catch video version of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's going to be it for this show. You guys have a great one. Thanks a lot for coming in. Great Thank show, you guys. everybody. Appreciate Ura. it. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.